sleep this late? Why, half the day is gone as pretty near sun up. Man who takes alive, I ain't stayed a bed this late in 72 years. <laughs> Morning, Granny. Now, Jethro, don't you yell at me. I'm going to get breakfast just as soon as I can. Ma's done give us breakfast already, Granny. And now she's got us cleaning the house from top to bottom. How come no one woke me? Well, she says we ain't supposed to wake you. That's how come she shut off your alarm clock. So Pearl done it. I'm sorry I took it out on you, clock. Your <laughs> Ma says bring you this bucket of suds. Oh, morning, Granny. How's your rheumatism? What rheumatism? Well, uh, Pearl says you was having some twinges last night. Uh, that's how come she put a little Mountain Dew into your squirrel soup. <laughs> Pearl spiked my soup? <laughs> yeah, she figured it would uh, help you to sleep. And you was liking it too, Granny. You kept asking for another slug of soup. <laughs> well, that, that's because I couldn't believe that Pearl could make such good soup. Granny, what are you doing up? Hey, Pearl said I was to give you your breakfast in bed. Beds are for sleeping, not eating. Well, ain't Pearl said a body had to be waited on and took care of when it gets to be your age. My age? Well, I'm in the prime of life. And you tell your Aunt Pearl that... Never mind, I'll tell her myself. Nah, don't get riled up at Pearl. I reckon she's just trying to be helpful. She's about as helpful as an alligator in a swimming hole. <laughs> I'd rather be caught twixt a pair of scrapping bobcats and two women trying to run the same house. <laughs> I was just fetching this up to your room. Ma figured you'd probably want to set and rock a spell when you was feeling strong enough to get out of bed. Yes, Green, you take that back outside. And while you're at it, you fetch some flowers for your Ma's sick room. Ma ain't sick. Hey, she ain't met up with me yet. Where is she? In the kitchen doing the ironing. Ironing? I ain't done the washing yet. Ma done that while you were still in bed. All by herself? Oh, no. She had all of us helping. Ma gets a kick out of running things. She's gonna get a kick that she ain't looking for. I wanna boot her so hard that every time she sets down, she'll leave my footprints. Hey, come on. With all these newfangled gadgets, work around here is just play. Where are you going with that, Jeffrey? Outside. I told you to take it up to Granny's bedroom. Granny told me to take it outside. You're taking your orders from me and not from Granny. <laughs> that poor woman is old and tired, and we owe it to her to let her rest. <laughs> Just hope and pray when I get to be her age that somebody will be looking after me. <laughs> you can quit hoping and praying. And if you keep messing around my kitchen, you ain't gonna get to be my age. <laughs> Don't stand there. Do as Granny says. Take it outside. <laughs> How do you feel, Granny? Did you sleep off the soup? I mean, did the soup, uh, did you, did the soup help you to sleep? <laughs> now you listen to me, Pearl, and you listen good. When you was a baby and you needed it, I spanked you. And when you was a toddler, I paddled you. And when you was a young and I switched you. And I can still do it, Pearl. Besides, the target's a heap much bigger today. Granny, <laughs> don't be riled. I you was looking poorly last night, and I figured you needed a little rest. Honest, you, you look like the dogs that had you under the forge. <laughs> you can't scare me with that. I got a head of steam bigger than it has. Gonna make pretty music when you make it shake like this, Uncle Jed? That ain't for playing with, Jethro. You bust that, and your mall tan you good. Huh? I didn't watch the front of the house as high up as I can get. I'll need a ladder to get the whole thing. Did you need to wash the hole outside the house? Yes, sir. She said every inch of it. Oh, if she ain't the cleanest woman. Oh, come on, I'll help you. Uh, Granny! Jethro, 
Earl's going to fetch the truck around, and we're all going for a nice long drive and cool off some of the tempers in his family. Ain't Pearl. Ain't Cousin Jeff Raina coming? Oh, no, honey. She, she wants to practice her singing. She can go sightseeing another time. yourself running off and leaving a child that sick. <laughs> Rain ain't sick, she's singing. Well, she's singing sick. <laughs> With your information, my daughter's training for the stage. Well, now, that's one thing she can do, drive a stage. Ah, <laughs> Backbiting twixt you two has got to stop. Quick as Jethro gets here with the truck, we're going to take a nice long drive and show Pearl some amazing sights. She ain't never going to see no more amazing sights than she sees every morning when she looks in the mirror. <laughs> I wouldn't talk if girl, I was you. Dumpty Pop, here comes a truck and there's nobody a driving it. <laughs> What's the trouble, Jethro? It's out of gas, Uncle Jed. They ain't even enough to get to the filling station. Yeah, I'll tell you what, sir. To me, you run the house to get Granny's jug. The big one. Ooh! Don't tell me that child ain't sick. Nobody makes a noise like that on purpose. <laughs> You're gonna be sorry you said them things when Jeff Green commences singing with a big orchestra like Rudy Valley. <laughs> Ooh! Rudy Valley and his Connecticut Yankees. <laughs> Did you hear that, Jed? Your traitor cousin Pearl is letting her daughter desert to the Yankees. <laughs> I reckon they're getting what they deserve. <laughs> there you are, Pop. Thank you, Ellie Mae. <laughs> I just rule. See if that'll start. Okay, Uncle Jeff. Jethro and me is going to get gas. We'll be right back. Uh... <laughs> Tell me at school there's lots of movie stars live on this street. Oh, do you reckon that Francis X. Bushman lives in one of them houses? Wouldn't be a bit surprised. Oh, my stars and garters. If I was to meet him face to face, I'd faint that away. <laughs> so would he. <laughs> What'd she say, Ellie? Well, she said... Look at that big house down there. I bet you there's a movie star lives in that one. Oh, Jethro, drive up the driveway and I'll go to the door and ask for directions. And directions to where, Ma? Directions to the next corner. Who cares? <laughs> you didn't stop. Oh, I know how to get to the next corner. <laughs> now we have it. Why, that might have been Raymond Navarro's house. I might have got acquainted with him and told him how I play piano at the movie theater back home. <laughs> Why, I could have played and sung the song I wrote for the chariot race in Ben Hur. Remember, Dan Pearl, I don't reckon that was Mr. Navarro's house. I got a good look up the driveway as we passed. A barn door was open. There wasn't a span of horses or a chariot in there. Well, slow down anyway, Jethro. Land sakes, if I was to see Rod LaRock or John Gilbert or Hoot Gibson, why, I wouldn't even have time to ask for their autographs. Some women is just plain man crazy. <laughs> What'd she say, Ellie? Well, she said so. Let's drive it. down to the business part of town, Jethro, and show Pearl some of the beautiful buildings and stores they got there. Okay, Uncle Jet. Tell your Aunt Pearl not to fret. They's been there, too. Hey, Pearl, Granny said... Never mind, Allie. Drive on, Jethro. I think we'll see some movie stars down there. Come in, folks. The movie's about to begin. By the way, the wax figures out front are by courtesy of the Beverly Hills Movie Museum. 
Ducky ain't Pearl. There's a moving picture to you up yonder. Yeah. I wonder if they need a right good first class piano player. <laughs> Why, do you know one? <laughs> now, I have taken Say, all... Say, Pearl, my... ain't there movie stars out in front of that theater? <laughs> Top of my Jeff Roo. I can't believe it. It's Douglas Fairbanks, Rudolph Valentino, and William S. Hart. I have never seen one woman as band crazy and movie star crazy as William S. Hart. Let me off of here. Well, drive on before we embarrass them poor fellas. Real honey, you're my hero. You hoo you hoo Stood there with them steely eyes just a staring at me. You bitch, Granny. Well, Rudolph Valentino kind of give me a scorcher of a look, too. He sure did, girl. How about them green drawers that Mr. Fairbanks was wearing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Dick. You ought to dye your drawers that color. <laughs> oh, Pearl, red's my color. <laughs> hey, Jethro, let's go for a swim. I'm too hungry, Ellie Mae. All that driving around, give me an appetite. Yeah, I reckon all that fresh air give us all our appetite. I'm empty as last year's bird's nest myself. <laughs> Buddy, time too. I reckon I got time for a little friend before fiddle. Hurry up, Ellie Mae. I could eat a horse. Well, did you just everybody relax? I'll have Vittles to cook in for you can say Jack Robinson. <laughs> Jack Robinson. <laughs> and you stay out of my kitchen. I believe that kitchen happens to belong to my cousin Jake. Well, I'm a granny. And grannies is closer than cousins. Not when the granny's on the wife's side. I got clamped blood in my veins. <laughs> you want to keep it there, you stay out of my kitchen. <laughs> Come on back. There's going to be a fight. I don't fight nobody twice my age. There ain't nobody twice your age. I'm never going to be on the sunny side of 45. Well, then move into the shade. You're drying up something awful. Now, hold on, hold on. Who's closer related to you, Jen? Her or me? I is, because I'm a granny. You're a mother-in-law. I'm blood cousin. You're going to be... Oh, now, no. Both just as close related to me as folks can be, because I love you both equal. And it'd pleasure me if you'd shake hands and come out fighting. <laughs> come on now, shake hands. Granny, you start it off. Come on. Now, shake hands. Come on, Granny, shake hands with Pearl. Hey, I know, uh, Granny, say something nice to Pearl. Go on, say something nice. Pearl, I never did see anything prettier than the weather is today. Now, oh, Granny. Well, that was friendly. Well, say something nice and friendly uh, about Pearl. Don't force her, Jack. Forcing her? She's just trying to think up some extra special nice. Now, ain't you, Granny? Yeah, and it ain't easy. See? Oh, Pearl. She's always bragging on you. How pretty you are. What a nice figure you got. I bragged on Pearl's figure. You sure did. You said Pearl got the kind of figure a man likes. Yeah. And then I said, too bad a man didn't get it instead of Pearl. <laughs> I wouldn't talk if I had a figure as bony as you. Now, Pearl. You're built like a sack full of horseshoes. <laughs> And you're built like a sack full of doorknobs. <laughs> now, let me tell you... Uncle, Uncle Jed, you're breaking up a good fight. Yeah. Oh, why don't you go out and help your sister Jethreen? Oh, what's she doing? I don't know. Find out what she's doing or go help her. Oh, you never let me have any fun. No. <laughs> I'm asking you just as nice as I know how to stop all this backbiting and bickering. You're both fine-looking women. I'm proud to be kin to you. Why, if folks didn't know... They think you was Ellie Mae's sisters. Huh? Oh, Ellie, honey. <laughs> now, why don't you take these two pretty girls swimming down to the seaman pond? That ought to cool them off. In the dead of winter? 
Oh, the water stays warm all year round, ain't Pearl? Yeah, it must be fed by some kind of hot mineral springs or something. <laughs> uh, th that ought to be mighty good for your rheumatiz, Granny. And I'll fix lunch while you're swimming. <laughs> I told you to stay out of my kitchen. And I told you that... Now, well, that's enough. Uh, uh, and I hear one more word spoken anger out of either one of you. Dog, if I ain't gonna take a switch to you. Ain't Pearl? Granny ain't too fond of swimming, but I'd be mighty proud if you'd go with me. Oh, that's a mighty sweet invite, Ellie Mae. Earl, did you bring some swimming clothes? Yeah, I did. Well, now you run along, get into them. Well, I don't... Come on, put them on. All right, doggies. I'll bet you Pearl in them swimming clothes has got the figure of a young girl. She better give it back before she stretches it out of shape anymore. <laughs> I didn't say it in anger. I'm smiling. <laughs> well, I'm ready for the water. <laughs> Looks like she's been in it for six days. <laughs> You are one of the finest looking women ever to come down out of the hill. And you're extra fetching in your swimming clothes. <laughs> I made it myself. The ticket, you see. <laughs> it's all hand work. No. <laughs> yep. Every gore and gussy and dart and tuck and ruffling and rick black, I did it all myself. Mm, doggy, that's mighty pretty. And so are you, Pearl. Granny, did you ever see anything like Pearl in her bathing suit? No, sir, I ain't. Well, uh, come on, I'll show you the pond. Ellie Mae and Jethro's down there waiting for you. Cousin Ellie, while we're waiting for these ham hocks to thaw out, I'll race you to the fur end of the pond and back. Yo, wait till I get on this swimming cap. Don't go and... I wish I didn't have to wear this. Granny says that pond water's bad on my hair. Well, why don't you cut some of that hair off? Hey, that's a dandy idea. Would you do it for me, Jethro? Well, sure. <laughs> And I could find something to... Hey, there's some shears. Well, I get all close to my head, Jethro. Okay. I want it short as yours. Well, hold still. I don't want to shorten your head, none. Jethro! Yeah, Uncle Jed? Hold on there. What do you think you're doing? Fixing to cut Ellie's hair. Well, I get all short, Paul, so it won't get in my eyes when I swim. I'd sooner cut off my arm than that beautiful hair of yours. Now, don't you never get a notion like that in your head again, nor you neither. You mean I gotta let my hair grow long as Ellie's? Jethro, <laughs> why don't you try using your head for thinking? I have tried, Ma, and it hurts. <laughs> Keep an eye on these two. I gotta go back up the house. I will, Jed. Hey, Ma, you wanna race Ellie and me to the fur end of the pond and back? In the water? Yes, sir. <laughs> and get my swimming suit wet? Yes. Yeah. Oh, you do bear watching, both of you. <laughs> you seen the ham hocks? Yeah, Ma. Where'd they come from? From pigs, I reckon. <laughs> How did they get here? Oh, I took them out of the icebox. I was getting awful hungry. Was you going to eat them raw? Of course not. Huh. I was going to keep my swimming trunks on. Hi, <laughs> May. Yeah, Pearl. What is this thing? It looks like a stove on wheels. Well, that's what it is. It's called a portable barbecue. You just put a fire in there, then you lay the meat on this thing. All right. Ellie May, you fetch some firewood. Jethro, you slice them ham hocks. <laughs> Would you like to hear next, Uncle Jed? Well, uh, can you play Dixie? Why, sure. I sure do like to sing that song. It's right good for dancing, too. Would you do a jig? Well, if the music happens to get down around my feet, I might just cut loose and stomp a spell. <laughs> Better take my coat off just in case it does. <laughs> In the land of cotton, old times there is not forgotten. Look away, look away, look away, Dixie Lane. I wish I was in Dixie. Hooray, hooray! In Dixie Land, I take my stand to live and die in Dixie. A 
away, 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 away from pearls. Dixie land, I'll take my stand away from a cousin of her pearls. Away, away, away down south in Dixie. Away, away, away from Pearl and Dixie. Oh, I was away from Pearl, away from Pearl and old Pearl and away from Pearl and Dixie. <laughs> Nothing smells as good as hammer cooking, Ma. Uh, that's the truth. Wait till Jess Wing gets a whiff of this. Ham is her favorite. Mine too, Ma. Come on, hurry up. Jess Wing? What is that delicious smell I'm a smelling? It smells like hammer cooking, Uncle Jess. Well, let's get on down to the cement pond and tell everybody we're going to have ham. <laughs> that is a shortcut. When the family tastes these riddles, they ain't never gonna let Pearl near the kitchen again. Mmm. <clears throat> Good. <laughs> so hungry they can't get up. <laughs> on this here stove with wheels. Ma can cook anywhere. Well, let's see her cook where I'm gonna Don't put... Don't do it, Granny! 